hunt to what we just said and just restart over everything. Okay. Oh, we start from the beginning? Yeah. Okay. Uh, we're live. Uh, play the uh, clip, Mellow. Hey, how y'all doing? Hey, what's up, you all? Hey. Listen, so we're just going to go ahead and keep it uh, 100 with you guys. We apologize for what just happened earlier. Uh, we hope that the live, we hope that we are live. Um, I don't really know if we are or not, but if we are not live, we will get William uh, to come to the studio. Uh, so I can't really say. But we're just going to continue with the show. William, how you doing? I'm great, thanks. Shalda and Isaiah, how y'all doing? Oh, we're great. I'm, I'm, I'm amazing. I'm amazing. You know how it goes. Great. Uh, we're for this, guys. All right. So, William, what brings the baddest to the William, the baddest? Hello. Can you oh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. I don't know. It kept like going in and out. Okay. So, um, yeah. Baddest is just about being yourself, being um, bad. It's like, like you know, when you walk into a room, they're going to know who you are and not by, you know, how much money you have or what your clothes say, just by, like, you know, your energy. Energy is everything. And so, like, I'm on the baddest and my energy gets me into doors and places that people have never really ever seen. Say, say it. Okay, so what does the face tattoo represent? Okay, so basically the face tattoo represent energy, light. Um, there's three sevens. So if you stack three sevens on top of each other, you'll get a lightning bolt if you draw the line to the connect them. Um, okay. So wait, so is that like a? Is, does it actually mean something like the three sevens with the lightning bolt? Yeah, it just it it just means uh, everything in the in your universe is aligned. Like basically okay. everything's aligned and a part of your part of your destiny and universe. Yeah, energy. So, Will, so, I have no tattoos at all. Would you recommend me getting a tattoo? Would I recommend you? Yes. Why the hell not? <laughs> you going to get my lion tattoo, Rasheed? Listen. I'm you, that's I'm the best tattoo. tattoo you can get. <laughs> <laughs> I am you still nervous about a tattoo. You should not be. I'm telling you. I was like that when I got my first tattoo, which is literally uh, right here. Which oh, is my dad's name, and after that, I was like, oh, "Okay, it ain't meant to it." I don't got a couple more. So, wait, how many do you have? Um, one, two, three, five. Uh, I don't have that many. So, will yeah, I want, I want to get, I want to get them right, right here. I want to get my wait, my next one. I want it right here, like right all of this. Yeah. I want a sleeve. I'm going to get me a sleeve. Oh yeah, I'm getting all that done. I'm after I get signed. I got to get signed first. I need to make at least a million dollars first. I got you, Dad. Go speak that into existence. We even gonna Before, be a million, baby. We we taking billboard, billboard by December. I got six months. Okay, yes. let's. Before we uh, before we move on to the next question, William, I just want you to pronounce your name one more time. My name is William the Beatties. <laughs> the <Beatties. laughs> the thickest white boy. We gotta, we gotta put emphasis on the Beatties. The Beatties. <laughs> William, would you get that as a ring talk? <laughs> um. Even, Hello. That would be cute. <laughs> Listen, so a lot of people may not know that you are a great, fantastic rapper. Oh, That's yeah. The- it isn't just my personality that you see on reality TV shows. I actually do rap music, and that stuff do hit. It's not basic. It's not uh, a, a cringing sound. I make dope music. My stuff is studio, like, professional. My music videos are it. Like, don't play with me. <laughs> Okay, so um, what who are what are some who are some of the artists in the industry that you work with on your in your with your music? Um, so me and Saucy Santana have made uh, a song together called "Fuck Me on Facetime." Oh, um, 
I love During the sometimes. process of that, I was also working with Roland Ray at the time because we're like catfish sisters. And um, we did a song called Fuck Karen during the pandemic for all the crazy racist white women. Um, I went all the way to the White House, shot the music video. Donald Trump's people went crazy um, for Black Lives Matter. Um, did that shot that with Roland Ray at the same time filming for my FaceTime with Sasha Santana. Then they got in their beef. And then um, those, those songs went up and those videos went up. And then I got, um, I made a song called Pretty and Paid. And the first time I had posted it, it got like thousands and thousands and thousands of hit without even a music video, just an album cover, just a click. And then Trina had posted it and she said, uh, you're gonna make things shake this year. This was like back in last year. And um, I was like, yeah. So that they was doing so good in numbers that uh, I wanted to throw somebody on it. So I picked uh, It's Your Boy Candy. Mm -hmm. And um, this guy, James Wright Chanel, he's the famous Patty Pies guy. And uh, I threw them on it and, and we made a movie again. And, and I love making movies. I love putting not only great music out there, but I love you know pushing the boundaries and making videos and being the director of a vision that I had when I'm making these songs. Because don't get me wrong, you can listen to a song, but I like the story of a song and just visualizing it, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So out of all the people that you named, what would you say be your biggest hit? Uh, I would say Pretty and Paid. Like Zeus, when I got on the Bad Boys uh, on Zeus, like they promoted Pretty and Paid. Mm -hmm. Like they promoted it. Like millions and millions and millions and millions and millions of people know when the bad is Pretty and Paid. Mm -hmm. So that's my biggest hit song so far. But Great Sweatpants is on the way. Uh, Big Booties <laughs> Out West is coming. Those are really good songs. So I feel like every time an artist does a song, they, 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 you have to go out the studio knowing that, oh, that's the one. Every yeah. song you do, if it's not the one or the hit, you have, you believe it is, you know, right. like, it's like, it's like you're, you just gave birth to a child, mm -hmm. you know? So honestly, you know, since you, you know, you are a rapper, you know, honestly, I, I if we're just going to keep it real on here, I feel like a lot of black people view your stuff. So how does other races, how do you feel other races feel about your music? Because we know that you got a plus in the black community. What do you think about the other? Well, community? I would say that the black people love me, and then some black people hate me. Mm -hmm. um, not everyone's gonna love you, um, right? Some people see me as what they call a culture vulture. I'm a culture companion. It's a difference. Mm -hmm. um, I would definitely say like white people are mad at me because they feel as I should not be doing hip hop. Right. You know, like oh, you're 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 should be doing this or doing that. Why are you? Why are you doing rap music? Why are you putting your hair in braids? Why are you, you know? But it's like, it's not even that. It's like, I grew up, I lost my mom and dad when I was 13. And I had like this black dude like raising me in this, in, from, I went from New Orleans to Dallas and I was raised in like the hood of Oak Cliff. It's like the south side of Dallas. Mm -hmm. And then this dude like, you know, showed me in the project, I was a kid. So I grew up in that lifestyle, not saying I'm hood and I'm a gangster or whatever, but it's just, right. I just adapted to the environment and the way people were around me. And I felt uh, a, a need for hip hop and I love hip hop. And it's just a part of my blood, so. So yeah. was that the reason why you went on to, I think you was that, is that a part of the history that you and Mula have? I think you want, was supposed to be on his show or something? Like he has a radio show or something? Yeah, so basically I was in New York City. I had did a segment of Rolling Loud, uh, like, eight months ago in New York City. And during that time, it was like right in October. Um, I was there, Lakia was there, we went out to dinner. Uh, and then I, they had they had put a billboard of me in uh, Times Square. And Mula had saw, I was in New York and my billboard was in Manhattan. I had just did all this stuff with uh, uh, Rolling Loud and all of that. And so basically um, he saw it and he was like, hey, that's the thing. People are always watching. Uh, people are people know who the movers and the shakers are. Whether the movers and the shakers have ten thousand followers or a million right. followers, right. they know who's moving and they know who's shaking. And I just so happen to be the person that's been shaking, and I've been pushing for ten years. So this didn't all just happen. Mula wanted me on his show. I went and got on his radio show. He was like, "Where do you see yourself in six months?" I was like, "I don't know." Um, he was like, "Well, you need to push pretty and pay harder. You need to do this. You need to do that." I love the music. I love the sound. I love the drive. I love the story. All of that, and it's on YouTube, and it's like, um, or somewhere, it's somewhere, but it's <laughs> like, yeah. 
What I can't hear you. What you said, Isaiah? No, we Maybe can't hear you. We can't hear you. Hello. May I take uh -uh. it out? Yeah, because the Bluetooth ain't working. But anyway, go ahead, Will. You keep saying what you were saying. No, oh. we can't hear you. Oh, okay, yeah. So basically, he interviewed me, and then he was talking like, uh, "What are you gonna be doing next year?" And I was like, "I don't know." Um, there's some stuff going on, like that uh, TV stuff I'm working on, and like Mula kind of like watched me. As I said, a lot of viewers watch. Not that they try to steal the ingredient, but because right. it won't work for them, it work for me. But it's like they they see who you like and who you follow and who you hang out with, and they try to like get the ingredients to get to where you're at. So I wouldn't say he did that, but I will say there was a big influence on him watching what I did. From so the did y'all like have any kind of beef or anything in the house? Or? No, that's why I was very confused because it's like you give all these kids, that, but all the kids besides Milan, you give all the kids besides me because we were the ones that are on television before. You right. give them all a camera and a platform and the moment the cameras start rolling you meet these new people that you didn't know before and that's why i was still confused the whole time of why mula was like treating me the way he i've treated always me. liked Mulan since he was on um love and hip-hop when he you know first came out and stuff or whatever i'm gonna say something if i was a gay man Mulan could get it but i'm not <laughs> a man i'm just saying because you know i saw the deal, though, you know, and he got a sexy body. Hello. And he's always licking his lips. Yeah, I mean, he's soft and dangerous, but you know, we digress. Yeah, we digress on it. What you right. asked, Isaiah? Okay, so the question I had was, um, are you? Would you ever work with Lakia? If, if you think, if I think I'm talking, oh my god, do you understand how many times I DM Lakia and she just reposted me like five days ago when I did a dance to her song. I look but good. I look banging. I, yeah, I look good. Did you see? I posted it. She reposted it. Yeah. So uh, that's the song I had did to her. But it's like when I met her, I was having Zender at the uh, TG. Was it TGI for Applebee's? No, TGI Fridays on Forty Second. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And I was we had to go upstairs because the dude I was with didn't have a vaccine card. Y'all know I had to have a vaccine card. I couldn't film my shows without it. But uh. So we went upstairs, and as we walk in, you see Lakia with her friends. And I'm like, okay, hey, girl, what is this? She's like, yeah, just from the rolling loud. I was like, it's me too, why? So that was lit. But I would love, I would dream of, of doing a song with Lakia, but I think she's that team. Would be I think she's team op, so yeah. Are we speaking of Anthony? Oh, no, I'm talking about the, the other rapper on the show. Oh, I don't want to say that name. Yeah. Well, you can say you want to. I'll just say yes or no. I know who you're talking about. But <laughs> Girl, it, let's see. Is a girl? No. I love girls. <laughs> what was the question? I'm, yeah, I will work with Lakia. I'm gonna come. I'm gonna okay. come to California. So I but I know that I it. know that in time Lakia is gonna come. But here's the thing: these are these are Atlanta girls. I want a West Coast girl. No shade. Like. I want to work with uh, Saweetie. She's my West Coast girl. She's my West Coast city girl. So she's in the Bay in LA. Like, baby, we need to get together, bitch. Stop playing. Let's make that happen. Let's make it happen. Because Saucy, Saucy needed, like, a mulatto in them, you know? Those people to, like, Suki to push, you know? Like, I need the female rapper to push me and help me win more, you know? Like, right. Yeah. Okay, Bill. So we or I could just pull a Megan Thee Stallion and have Beyonce call me, you know? Look at Big Frida. Okay, Big yeah. Frida has two number one Grammy women songs Frida, now. Big Frida, the Queen Diva. The Queen Diva, you already know. Okay, that's it. <laughs> so we know that you have been on plenty of TV episodes. What's your favorite TV show that you have been on? Um. Okay, everybody knows me from Catfish because it's been two seasons. Well, the last episode of Catfish I did aired like a couple months ago, and it's it was what was all about me. Well, William yeah. is a taste of his own karma, but it was more about me. So it's like they well, came back. They made me. Way. What? Who well, you can't see? Well, that was the first episode, season seven, episode twenty-five. I catfished. I ain't watched catfish in years. But then the other, but then the other people catfished you, TV. as in the two, the sister and the brother, right? Yeah, that was the new one that just that just went up. So breezy so and uh, and his sister tricked me, but the, that I loved that episode so much because. 
Here's the Was thing. it real? Of course. Oh, okay. So um, the thing about it is that uh, MTV has really kind of like looked out for me, especially during the pandemic. And I had my first episode where I was catfishing Dallas Flashman Wade mm -hmm. on uh, MTV's Catfish, like literally six months before the pandemic. And it was like 2019 August or something like that. Right. And basically, um, the video, the, the shit was so good because I brought OnlyFans to MTV. And basically, oh. OnlyFans is like, no one knew what it was. So Neve was like, what's an OnlyFans? And I was like, actually, he was over there tricking with old men. Da -da -da -da. Oh. You know what I mean? So I was just yeah. like, yeah. So that's why I was setting him up. And we were supposed to have a threesome and then a foursome. So I don't know why he acting funny. So listen. So, so you think the threesome, what is going to be a, a guy on guy, guy and female? Well, basically, the thing was me and Safari, my girlfriend, uh, she was talking to him in the Safari? DM. You talking about long song Safari? No, I know so I know Safari too. I know Safari. We we personally know each other. But no, not like well, that. I saw what he got is I want parts of it. Child, when he one time he walked into IHOP, uh I was sitting there, IHOP making beats. They was having an the Ice Age 2 premiere in Hollywood Boulevard, and Nikki was an Ice Age 2. And uh uh basically she had to do the red carpet, but I guess they was beefing at the time. And SB, yo, SB, what the fuck's up? So I was sitting in the dip in the IHOP because it's like three blocks from the red carpet. And I'm sitting on the computer making beats. I just moved to LA. And Safari was like, he walked in, he had on the shades and some nice, and he had tattoos. And I was like, I know this guy, but I'm just going to pay it. So I'm sitting there making beats on like the Pro Tools and stuff. And then I'm sitting there eating, and then he sits next to me. Not the Pro Tools. Mind <laughs> you, he looks at me twice, and I look at him, I'm like, and he comes and sits next to me, and he's like, "Oh, what you working on?" I was like, "Oh, I'm just making some beats, you know, I'm just making some beats." <laughs> and then so you know I, how to work. So you know how to work with Pro Tools. Mm. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. They needed him for the Pro Tool. Maybe all that wouldn't went on. Right. Maybe I would have took the fuck over. Oh, like, Get out of my way. <laughs> but <laughs> you know, things went south and left real fast. But that was the point of the show. That's it's a, it's a it's a TV show. There has to be a drama yeah. and a downfall. Yeah. Okay, you know, those are the episodes that I wasn't there, so it was dry until I came back and then I left again. Oh yeah, yeah he was. Yeah, when you, when you he came was back, I was just part. like, when you stepped out of the car, I was like, and came in the house, I was like, oh. He already on the seat. He finna, he finna just pop off something to go down. And it was just how you were standing there. You weren't smiling. You weren't talking. You were doing that. So it was just like your little hamster in your head was going. You was just ready to pop off. So it was just like when you see your I mean, you I mean, it, it's a reality TV show. Right, Who's right. really going to sit there and do a kumbaya? Who the fuck? <laughs> we're not there for that. Bad boy, bad boys don't say they're sorry. Y'all was just wailing. Y'all was just going ahead and then it was just like boom, you gotta push the pool. The only the part that I didn't like about that is that first of all, if there was no pool, I would have won. Um, mm -hmm. second of all, you guys got his England, not mine. And third of all, um, when you when you guys see the camera move, you don't get to see my first few hits. So I got in his face before you guys see me back up. And what made him get angry and want to just go crazy and run at me all of a sudden is because I already got in his face a, a good few times. But mm -hmm. the cameras didn't show that because, you know, EP, best friend, you know, Anthony, best friend, you know, it's just good. Edits are going to be in that favor, in his favor. So I already realized that after I saw the episode, oh, the edits are in his favor. I get it. Oh, yeah, William, yeah. you lost. You fell in the pool, baby. I know. I, I remember there was a split moment right before I fell in the pool and I felt it. I smelt it when I was like, oh, fuck. And he looked at me he was, and it was, he was just like, it's like I knew it, but I couldn't think about what was I about to do. I could have just grabbed him with me or something. So I just got a, a question. People, a lot of people don't realize that, like you on the show, so you know everything that happens. You know, like day in and day out. A lot of people, from the viewer's perspective, think they know everything, and that's not always the case. It's so many. If anybody who does like any type of like internet things or TV things, you know that it's all based on the film. You know, what I'm saying the person. Right. Who, they can put it's it. all based on the edits and and, and uh, how much them how much the producers like you and and, yeah. and and the mission of the show. Like for example, I knew what place I had to fill after the first night, and then I was like, I contemplated not doing it. 
I okay. contemplated after after I found out, you know, the mystery of what I was there for. I was mm -hmm. like, oh no. I said, I can't do this. And then somebody, you know, one of the other Basically fighting said, every night? No. <laughs> that that I'm okay with that. I'm talking oh. about like <laughs> okay with that. It's it, <sighs> So, so you don't want to reveal too much without revealing too much. We is that what you're it's like? To do? Example, I'll say it like I'll give you a metaphor. White white networks make black people look terrible on their shows yeah. and movies. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, I can't I say that. So I can't use it. So I, I just I, have I caught on. I, yeah, that's so, what I was saying. He was trying to say something without as, saying as it. much as I love as much as I love, and I'm so thankful for the opportunities I've been given. Um, Zeus is an amazing network. They're great. They're dope. They're like gold right now. They're the mightiest. They didn't hire they're us. Great. Shoot. They didn't give us. But it's like, I knew that I was like, fuck, man. Like, fuck. I can't know. Like, I'm not supposed to be looked at. Like, I'm not supposed right. to be that. I can't do this. Right. So, so when you auditioned for the Bad Boys Club, did you think you was going to make the show? Uh, no and yes, just because I was actually supposed to be on another show with Saucy Santana called It Was a Love Show. Mm -hmm. And Aww. Zeus was doing it, and we were going to do it, let's say, let's say this was like eight months before Bad Boys started creating. So that happened. I got casted for that show, me and Saucy and like probably six other or seven other guys. And that was supposed to be the beginning of Bad Boys. So they put a mm -hmm. bunch of gays in the house and have them go crazy. <laughs> and I like the way you say that. Be so, but, you know, that was, but that so was funny, hilarious. It's so funny that you say that because when people think of gay boys, they always think of going crazy. Like, where's the positivity in the gay boys? Like, can that not well, be like um, positivity pos doesn't make money. So <laughs> that's true. So, no I, 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 the, so I just got a question. So, of all the men that was in the bad boys' house, who'd you sleep with? I want to know. I wouldn't know. I'd say you I would have slept with. Um, carry on Franklin. That was not who I was thinking, but okay. Mm -hmm. No, okay. because the other ones already got it's a big situation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Well, if I was in the house, mm -hmm. if I would have been in the house, I would the only person probably I, if I was a gay male in the house, I would I would have definitely tried to sleep with Milan. But me being a female in the but house, see, me, I mean, being, me being a bottom her. and Milan being a bottom, um, that wouldn't have worked. Yeah, Milan's a big dick bottom, he's like, got a really big dick, but he's a bottom. So. <laughs> well, yeah. I would, I would, I would, I'm just saying, saying, I would have, I would have wanted Milan if I was in the house as a gay man. I'll be honest, I'll be honest, so, I would have got Curtis because, uh, Curtis oh, well, see, he's already occupied with somebody. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I would have said Curtis too, but see, me and Curtis never had one conversation, not even hello, how you doing. But uh he can be attacking it's just a fantasy it's just I literally was just on FaceTime with Natalie. Just a I was on FaceTime yeah. with Natalie three days ago because I was upset because me and Brie promised each other see me and Brie were friends before her getting on baddies. So everything connected. Yeah. But she was in Miami with um with Natalie and they were doing her birthday. And I was like, But me and Brie has the same birthday on the same year, which is this Saturday. But Natalie, you can invite me. She's like, Okay, you happy early birthday. Thank you. Well, happy birthday. So what well, y'all yeah, do for now? Since you can't sit with them. Hold on, guys. What, what's the what you were saying? What's the last thing you were saying? You didn't get it out. Oh, I would just say like we were. Uh, there was a morning where Milan was taking these promo photos for um, Grinder. He had like some some uh, uh, what the fuck are they called? A uh, uh, jock strap mm -hmm. and like a tee or something. And it was like early in the morning. People were asleep. You didn't get much sleep in that house anyways. You maybe slept three or four hours. Right. If you're lucky, if Anthony wasn't yeah. asleep in your bed with Taco Bell everywhere and snoring. <laughs> but um, the thing is, is that um, he asked me, it was early one, and see, Milan had the master bedroom, so they had like the sickening bathroom, like the t tub that's like the big jacuzzi and the big shower. And so he wanted me to take pictures for him. So I'm sitting here taking like a video of him doing the promo, but he's in this jog strap. Everyone's asleep. It's early in the morning. I'm looking at him like, ooh, but I'm like, <laughs> I don't. I can't. Like that's my sister. Like yeah. what? So yeah, that was the time when I was. Like, I would have got me a piece. <laughs> I was like, what? I would have had some. He's like sitting there saying. moving it around. You know, he's moving it. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I see that's turning. That's turning you on. 
Mm-hmm. But see, it's like it's like we're both sisters, so I couldn't see him like that. But other than that, there was a time when we were doing the promo shoot and me and Gutta was in the same car, you know, because on the trailer we got released together. And mm-hmm. uh all of all of a sudden it was like the whole thing is like Gutta wanted uh Kirk Franklin's son. Mm-hmm. And we already knew that. And I was like, we was in the car, right? And Kirk Franklin's son was driving the car next to us. So his driver's seat was next to my window, but Gutta was on the left side of me. And this is before we got out the car for the trailer. And um mm-hmm. Meanwhile, Andrew and Milan are kicking and fighting and shit. And so it's like, uh, I was looking at him and I was like, oh, bitch, uh, uh, Kiri, I got a big dick. I, she was like, what? Don't be looking at my man. I was like, I'm not looking at him. I'm not looking at him. I swear, I'm just I'm just stating the obvious. I was like, watch him walk back. Watch him walk. We sit here watching his dick move and stuff. So, uh, oh, wow. What, moving on from that, what does being a bad boy mean to you? Huh? I said, what does a bad boy, what does being a bad boy mean to you? Being a bad boy means to me is that, like, you know, owning your shit, um, not specifically having to fight all the time. But if someone tries you, then try back. If it's giving mm-hmm. fight, then fight back. But really, being a bad boy is just getting to the fucking bag, like, getting to the money, like, living your dreams, doing what someone says you can't do, being who the world says you can't be, whether you a boy or a girl. I don't That's care. You, you bad. All right? <laughs> Okay, so out of all of y'all that was in the house for the bad, who who was who was not a bad boy that was in there trying to pretend to be a bad boy? My stand-in, sweetie, Mr. Dylan. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> oh, Dylan. He smelled what like a bad orange chips. What, what, what was delivered? Like what? What was his deal, Andrew? What was his deal? Because. He always on Instagram getting pissed off. Well, see, that's the thing. Tools, and that's Andrew, how you is, Andrew is a social media person. There was a time before the show ever started, they recorded of me and him going back and forth. And he was calling me trailer park trash. And I was going over there. I wanted to fight him. Like, I don't care how big he was. I wanted to fight him. And so I was getting his, but they was like, no, he you can't. Don't fight. But see, he that's the thing. Police. Right. So here's the thing. It's yeah. like Andrew... When he realized there was a point where we was doing the photo shoot on the top of the building for the promo, we all walking up, mm-hmm. and and we had lunch and we was so tired because we just shot all day, and we was our, we was only halfway done with our day, and so basically Andrew uh was gutta he was talking about gutta, and gutta is like he starts tapping his leg and starts getting like <sighs> and like he's he wants to go he wants to go hit Andrew but see mm-hmm. Andrew thinks. Andrew thought this was love and hip hop, but no, babe. On Zeus, there is no rules. This is yep. Bad Boys Club. You will get fucked up. You will get fucked up. You will get fucked up. So if you that's pop why off, he you never, get because he already up. knew he was gonna get beat up. Mm-hmm. That's the thing. So they had to separate them two, like we was in school. So they had to put Andrew in the back. Because see, the thing about Andrew, he doesn't stop. He doesn't stop. Even mm-hmm. when the camera's going or not going, he doesn't stop. So he talked so much shit. By the time the next morning we were about to go to the house, he knew that was going to be the first thing that happened. Either Milan was going to get a hold of him or Gutter was going to get a hold of him or me. So how long do y'all actually stay in the house? Like, how long are you there? Well, they said they said I was there for two days. Technically, we filmed a whole week before the show. So we already knew each other and we already had so much escalation. Um, I was in the house for like maybe four days. So how long but, were you supposed to be there had you not left? Uh, like two weeks. Oh, okay. yeah, that's that's ideally. Uh, so two to three like, weeks. But on this one, it's different from the Bad Girls Club because, like, on the Bad Girls Club, they couldn't have a, like no social media. Um, they couldn't have their phones. Y'all were able to have your phones and stuff. So it was like y'all had more entertainment versus yeah. Them. It was no, just, it like, was COVID. Cool, see, the one thing people first to realize when they say. Oh, you watched Bad Girls Club. Oh, you knew what it was gonna be like. Actually, no. The th- the gag is is that you guys watched Bad Boys Club and Baddies on Zeus. You guys are not watching Bad Girls Bad Boys Club on Oxygen. They're different mm-hmm. liabilities. They're different laws. They're different fight rules. They're different things. It would have been a key 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 key. I would have probably made it to the motherfucking end if it was on Oxygen. But no, this is Zeus, baby. It it, you, it goes down. This is like prison. It's not meant to be mm-hmm. fun. Right. And if you don't have, I didn't, no one liked me. So even when I thought the white boy liked me, he didn't like me. He talked shit about me. So it's like, when you're not liked, when you feel alone and when you, when you are there and this is my city, I don't have to be there. I didn't have to stay. I will drive back home to my apartment that I live in LA when all of you other people are just tourists. I like so, that. 
What so is one lesson you took from the bad boys club? What? What is one lesson you took from the bad boys club? Um, <laughs> fighting. Like it make it like you want to get down up either way. I want right? to fight now. Like I want to fight now. Like it's like a, it's a fight. Like oh, I was never. I didn't have. I felt like a fat bitch on Jerry Springer fighting my first day. Oh. So then it's like I was like, oh well, you know, I kind of like this now. So when somebody tries me in public, it's like, do I turn it on or do I not? Do I turn it on or do I not? So, so basically. I want to fight. I want to go crazy. Like I want to do it again, but not next season. I actually want to go take fight lessons and get some, get some fighting, get some hits in, and learn, get a technique, and then go crazy. And then, so when, so when being on the Bad Boys Club, like, what would you try to get out of it? Like, what was you trying to get out of um, the Bad Boys Club? Um, because I wanted to push my, um, my music. It's all about branding. It's all about no matter. It's all about sacrifice. So I was sacrificing my mental and physical state to yeah. push my music, to push my brand. And and still to this day, you could log on and watch the first episode. And I was the only person that was promoted as the rapper. I was yeah. the rapper. Everybody else went viral for doing this, went viral for doing that. Well, it came from the middle of nowhere. I was the only person and they pushed my music still. Like mm -hmm. millions of people still watch my knowing that I was the rapper. So yes, it was a sacrifice that I took for the brand. So networking. So, are you and Anthony still beefing, or did y'all make up? Well, sis, I thought we made up, but no. Um, we stopped talking and ended it on terms because he still was going on and on about me. And and a lot of these cats get off of these shows since William was only there for two days, quote but he was episode mm -hmm. one, three, four, and seven. Um, the thing mm -hmm. is, is that like I was actually talking to this blogger, right, who blogs this page called Zeus Bad Boys Club. And I started talking to him like when I got off the show and you know, he would get all the tea, but I found out he was a really sickening trade, like over like he was a full top, he was sickening, light skinned, dressed, tatted up, skater boy, sexy, maybe like 24, 25. Um, he was fine. He was fine, oh, big wait, wait, wait. Kid, uncut, said, baby. So uh You said so, he was a uh, top? No, the boy that was uh the boy that I, the okay, so I would I'm getting to the point about me and Anthony right now. Uh, current tea. So basically <laughs> He basically, uh, this boy I've been talking to for the past four months, every mm -hmm. single day on, on video, on live, like, not on live, but just like together, like FaceTime video, FaceTime audio, all of that. I was getting to know this boy. I was going to sleep talking to this boy because I was falling in love with this boy. Like, I liked this boy a lot. I didn't even mm -hmm. meet this boy. We talked every single day. And I guess he wanted to be on Bad Boys Club, but I'm so stupid and naive to not realize that he wanted, everybody wants to be on this show. Everybody. Mm -hmm. And so he was obsessed with it. And... I just started liking him and we would talk and get drunk on the phone and stuff. What so, short story. Um, the bad boys auditions was last week, uh, well the week before. And he's like, I think I'm gonna go. I was like, You wanna go down there and do that shit? And then I was like, here, I'm gonna tell you the cheat codes. You need to do this, you need to say this, you need to walk in and do this, and this is what you need to do. Because I know what they I know what they want. I know how to get it, and I know how what was gonna happen. And so basically the boy, um, he said, Okay. So mind you, I'm going to Cleveland where this boy lives. And I didn't think he went. So I was like, hey, what's up? Where you at? Um, I'm going to be in Cleveland tomorrow. I'm going to see you. My booking is there. He's like, I'm going to call you back. I was like, wow, what's up? He was like, I'm, 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 I'm lit right now. I was like, oh, you must be fucking some little trick over there. It's fine. It's fine. I'm going to see you when I get there. And then 20 minutes later, Anthony calls me. What the fuck are you talking to people around me? I was like, Anthony, are you recording this for like, a narrative can you choose somebody else like can you call dylan or something or call somebody don't call me with this shit. i'm <laughs> done with that and he was like no nah, why do you want to fight yes or no and i was like wait are you trying to be like natalie or something like what's going on and then he was like um i was like i don't know what's going on can you please tell me why you're upset calling my fucking phone and going crazy and he was like you're talking to people around me or do you want to fight or not i was like I don't know what you're talking about. He hangs up. I'm like, okay. So I sit there for five minutes. I'm like, who the fuck is he talking about? Is this, I'm sitting here like, is he making this up in his fucking head? Like, what's going on, Anthony? So then I call back. Mm -hmm. Darrell answers the phone. Darrell says, you get me this time around. So what's going on? Who are you, ta why are you talking to FaceTime audio with people around us? I was like, audio, FaceTime. <gasps> and I said, <laughs> I said, you're with Trey. That's the boy's name. I said, you're with Trey. Mm -hmm. And then he was like, how do you know Trey? And I was like, I'm in love with Trey. Like, I love Trey. What the fuck is he doing there? 
And then he was like, I don't know him. I don't know him. I was like, wait, 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 wait. So you played me and then you used your cuteness card to get to Anthony. And Anthony's been, was what you saw, you went to Anthony's club that night, you landed there. And then you try, you want to get on this show. So you're going to go there and bug Anthony and give him everything he wants so that you get on this. It all started making sense. So then I, I said how much, how, how big his dick was, what it looked like. And, and Darrell was like, this is the scene, no one knows about this. Um, Darrell was like, I actually believe him as much as I don't like it. But me and De Darrell was friends before the show too, which is stupid. He sat in my house on this couch before. Um, but the thing is, is that uh, they believed me and then they hung up the phone. So mm. all that tea just went down recently. That's why I'm not cool with it. I love Darrell. So I love so, so, Hold on, is his, Beagle, is his Beagle account old West? Oh. I think I know the dude you're talking about because it's currently it's current tea that you that you're talking about right now, and I've been watching on YouTube. No, this guy's name is I don't know. Uh, his name is Trey, and he's a dreadhead dude, light skin, like tattoos and stuff. And he got uh, you say he got a, a big what? A a a nine. Okay, Trey gonna so, find you, Trey. They are gonna find no, no, you. No, 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 no. <laughs> No, think about it. I think I know who you're talking about. Uh, don't he do porn, if I'm not mistaken? No, no, not him. This guy okay. is, his okay. name is, he don't do none of that. People don't know he gay in his own city. He's not out there like that. All right. His, name is, his name is like, his, his Instagram they name is like Red so Savage or Redhead something. Red, Red, Dread something. He not even talk find Troy. He, he about to come out of his closet just like Moolah going to come out here. If you go to uh, who Anthony's probably following, and you'll see he's following. If you type in the letters R E D, uh, his his thing will pop up. Red something. It's like a dreadhead dude. Oh, uh, you know, finishing out uh, to the last. So, what what's the messiest internet drama you've been in? Um, uh, the messiest internet drama was when I got off the show, and everybody knew. I didn't know that I had a problem with Gutta. That the whole time I didn't know that. Gutta had went off after I left and fought Anthony, and he went off in house. See, I never knew that that happened. I mm -hmm. never knew that Gutta wanted to come down and fight me. I never knew that that was escalating. I was very confused. So this whole time, I was like, I didn't know that. So when the show ended, and I'm doing all these interviews, and I'm doing all this press and stuff, and people are talking about my fights, Gutta made a whole diss track about me, talking about my BBL, and it looks more like SpongeBob, and all this stuff. And so Gutta made a whole diss track, and Gutta was like, I was getting like, millions of hits on my page a day just because of beefing with him and he would get on live and he would be like i'm in la pull up what's your fucking address you want to fight and then shamar got involved in it uh from atlanta and then shamar went on live with me and said what happened with you and God? i said nothing happened he's sitting there talking about me like what's up he's mad he's mad at me because i fought anthony he's mad and god was like uh and then anthony's like oh i mean shamar was like oh okay and then Gutta got a live with Shamar. And said, so oh. what was you saying? And Shamar was like, I ain't say nothing. What the y'all was asking me questions. So what were you saying? What were you saying? Right. But then I and, but I was like, what add me to the live? See, Gutta has me blocked. I don't have Gutta block. So it's like when the fan the, the the numbers are are created upon drama, right? So there's traffic to your page because of drama. The world wants to see the negative drama. They want to see the fighting. They want to see who said what about who. So basically, when that was happening, that's what I've never been that type. I'm just gonna make my music and keep it pushing. If I'm fucking somebody famous, I'm fucking someone famous. That's the only drama you're gonna get. So it's like yeah. he they, they he was pushing it. So that narrative that was created on the show for the hate William narrative, the hate let's fuck William up, Williams this, William scary, William leaked the cast, William twerked the mullet. None of that was ever true. So that was just a narrative created in because I left. It was like a slap in the face. So basically, yeah. um, that happened and. They these cats get on these shows and get off and 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 they 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 I don't know it's like they keep the narrative going. That was none of that shit was real. You know what I mean? So so speaking of Moolah, my narrative changed of him when uh, about the trans part and then the twerking in the club when you was when you was dancing because I feel like well, I'm confused. Or well, like, see, here's the thing, uh, and, and and mind you, Moolah just moved to Atlanta. So what? Um, I think Moolah also has an alter ego. Mula secretly does not feel that way about people. That is a narrative that he created that alter ego on the show. That's why even when I went live with him, there's a YouTube video of me and Mula, our conversation. I don't know if y'all seen it, but me and Mula are arguing back and forth while I was in New York, I'm gonna pull up. 
This was after the show. And Mullah was like, uh, I was like, Mullah, if somebody told you to say those things to me and do those things to me, then just tell me now and I'll forgive you. Stop going with the fucking narrative you created on the show. This character. Okay. You're not, that's not who you are. It, okay, it, so, it, so would you say that narrative, is it basically saying like, he's not homophobic like he came off? Mullah is not homophobic. Okay. Mullah is, it went with that narrative because that's what sold. He he was watching. We had a whole fight that happened with the baby. So he not our event. So the baby had to and justify that he was not transphobic after saying all those things. Like little Boosie rants all the time about gay people. Mula knew that he had to represent something in that house. So that's what mm. Mula represented. So he's not in the closet. Basically, Mullah is not gay. He he just it's just the narrative he chose. Okay, well, Mullah, I take my comments back then because, like I said, the show painted him like a whole a hole, a bad person, he, like. like he a donor down low but, type but see, dude. Mula, Mula knew that him doing that it wouldn't have went against him. Yes, the gay people might have had a problem with him, but the but most of the Zeus audience is made up of heterosexual black women. They were gonna love him regardless. So with him saying these things about these people, they don't give a fuck if you watch it. His show is gonna be a hit. Just because mm. heterosexual, black and Latino and white women, and they're all going up there to audition for shows because those are the ones that were watching. That's the majority of the viewers. I watched, but I, I don't want to audition for that. He got going on. Because you support, yes, I understand. But here's the thing, it's like, you got to think about this is a business and these people are different. That's just their alter ego. So me and Mullah's alter ego that was created, I don't get along with that person. Right. But me and Mullah, we're cool. Like, mm -hmm. we talk. We, you know, we've talked recently. Well, I'll have to sit down and know. have a conversation with him to get this narrative out of my head because he really painted a nasty taste in my mouth. Well, hey, uh, I, got a I have said too. as many times as we done talked about this show, I want him to come out this closet that he is so deeply in because I felt like he was on the down low. That's never going to happen. Now hearing it, it's just like, okay, maybe I passed a little judgment on him from what I said. I'm sorry. But it was not. I really thought he was homophobic or trans. I, I mean, I really did because yeah, that's I was never like, going to happen. Those are for clicks. Think about this: you had to have all of these moments because each person on this show represented a group of people outside in the real world. So yeah, each mm -hmm. group of people that is in this real world that we're in was watching the show, and each group will choose a side, and each person represented that side. So therefore, regardless, we all represented a group in the world. You're right. Well, to I was to pull Curtis, out all the Curtis was him from the beginning to the end. He never did have like no homophobic gestures, no homophobic mm -hmm. sayings. Like he was just him from the beginning to the end. He was like, I'm gonna be me. You can either accept the person I'm being or not. And that's what I like. I like a real person. Who, who was? was real. Curtis. Curtis. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. From what I see, if you know what I'm saying, from what he showed on the show, like he, he, said, he cool kept with the everybody, narrative. right? That's what I'm saying. He he kept who he was. He was cool with everybody. You didn't really see him getting too much drama. He was just him, and that should have been what Mulah should have done, regardless of what you're trying to get people well, to say. All I'm saying like, is, that, you know, listen. There are things that I wanted to be. There's a character mm -hmm. myself who you guys get, who I wanted to be, and mm -hmm. I couldn't be that person. I couldn't. And when I realized that, it was time for me to, what I said, toot it and boot it. That's it. Toot because, and boot it. But, uh, because they were trying to get you to sell a different narrative versus what you were trying to sell, basically. Oh, yep. So last question. What's one thing you desire for your career in life? Um, I just want to make it. I mean, some people's definitions are like making it different for a lot of people. I feel like I've already technically made it, but I'm just beginning. I Timing is everything. Um, I want to. I want to hit Billboard charts. Climbing. I want to make a hit song. I want to have. Millions of, I want to get signed. I want to be on Euphoria the next season. I want to mm. act and do it. Like I want to be in the big bags. I want to be able to go like people. To look, there ten years ago, I was on TV and Britney Spears told me no. Mm -hmm. Simon Cowell told me no. Mm -hmm. And ten years later, I'm on the screens again, still fucking pushing. That's how you do it. You have to manifest, speak, and give it life. So all that you just spoke, you just gave it life. You just have to claim it and go get it. Like you said, I know, you and it got to work, and it's not easy. And trust me, I know. I do this alone. No help, no management. All, every, all the money I make, I put into it, my soul. It's just like, 
Um, I would just say, you know, I just want it. I just want my dreams to come true. They will. So, uh, so question: Are they gonna have a reunion? A bad boys? No, it's reunion? done. Bad boys reunion's done. The reunion was Jonathan's fight. <laughs> oh. Well, that's my well, dude right there. Because Jonathan was saying, um, "Let me say, was that a real fight?" Because let me say something, baby. <laughs> he was setting him up. He was setting him up. <laughs> and then the fact that he sat in his in his confessional with this man hat on his head, baby, that took me out. Because I was like. I just want to hug you. Let me say, so y'all funny. watched y'all watched a hit television show, and y'all watched me for four episodes. But um, I'm saying you guys watched a hit show. You guys needed William to come back so that they could be that much more extra time before y'all get to the, the 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 finale of Jonathan. Y'all needed the fluff of me going crazy. Yeah. So, so I'm just saying is that. Um, I wouldn't say believe everything because mm -hmm. it's so, but you guys got a hit show. We gave you guys a hit show. Most you did. That was my that was my partner right there. The beginning when y'all all was fighting and they was like you was hitting the air and I was just like Lord, they didn't have to call him out like this. yo. You that fight was all over TikTok. Crazy. That fight was on every blog. You was trying your hardest though, so you know what I'm saying that you beat the hell out that air. I'm gonna tell you that boy. That yeah, what uh what too. uh yo Nicki Minaj <laughs> said something like, child, what the air do to you? <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah, yeah, okay. Nikki like tweeted at something. Yo, I was gagging. Yes, it's a, but hey, Nikki, Nikki Minaj, uh, she tweeted or said it, so you got a comment for us. So that means she yeah, was right. Watching. It's like uh, it's like now that I go outside, I might not even have a million followers. I'm like six five k, but I'll get there. Um, yeah. <laughs> the thing is, like when I go outside, if I'm dressed like if I have my face showing, because I still wear my mask, right, and I wear like a beanie. Mm -hmm. But it's like if I go outside. And I go to like the mall or something or the club. This is LA, everyone's family. They don't care about you here. But if I go to like, you know, uh 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 uh, uh ATL, what's the mall? Uh, uh Lennox. Green Bar, Lennox. Lennox. If I go to Lennox, baby, Woo! it's over. They know but even want. like like I walked into a room not too long ago and Megan Thee Stallion was there and she was and she knew who I was. So it's just like they all watch, they all know. Mm -hmm. When I but walk into work, everybody know who I am. That's how I be shutting that room. As soon as I walk into work, and they know who I am. <laughs> <laughs> when I walk I into the store, they know who I am. Period. I just want that follow back from Nikki. Huh? It's gonna come. I just want I'm, my Nikki follow. It's gonna come. She gonna she gonna follow all of us. But um, when yeah, next time would, I come out to LA, we, we got a it link, so you can show me some of the It would be a gag if I worked with her in the future. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, William, that's, that's a big dream. Well, William, the baddest. We enjoy the baddest. <laughs> put you on the let's talk show listen you are always welcome to come back uh i do apologize for the technical difficulties at the beginning okay but hey we, made we it enjoyed work. it yeah thank you thanks for your the next time i come out to la we, we need to link up so you can show me around yeah i will hopefully i'm here i'm not in some i'm not i ain't moved to atlanta or dallas <laughs> Lord, Lord. either way i know how soon you trying to move though I gotta choose between Atlanta or Dallas. It's looking more like Dallas. I have real friends there. But Atlanta, yeah, I might hit, hit be working. <laughs> Everything bigger in Texas, baby. And the men out there. Oh, is baby. Fine. The, the meat it's is fun. always giving. It's fun. So I love to come <laughs> out there again. All right. Well, I know you're coming to my birthday party in December. So I'll see you there. All right. See y'all. We'll see you there. Yeah. Bye. <laughs> Bye. See